You're watching the Mr. Quality Guy YouTube channel. Hello everyone, Mr. Quality Guy here, and today we're going to do a video on the history of hardness testing, and we're going to look at a couple of key figures in the world of hardness testing to understand where hardness testing started to where we are today. So, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Today we're going to talk about the history of hardness testing. And the history of hardness testing goes back to the early 1900s. And it's under to understand the history of hardness testing is actually quite interesting and important. And we're going to go, off, go and look at four main figures in this. So if we start off with Brunel. The Brunel method was, uh, was proposed by Swedish engineer Johan August Brunel in 1900. It was the first widely used in a standardized hardness test in engineering and metallurgy. The typical test uses a 10 millimeter 0.39 inch diameter steel ball as the indenter with a 3000 kilogram force, 29.42 kilonewtons or 6,614 pounds of force. For softer materials, a smaller force is used and for harder materials, a tungsten carbide ball is substituted for the steel ball. The indentation is measured and hardness is calculated. So how does it appear on GD&T? The standard format for specifying tests can be seen in example HBW 10-3000. HBW means that a tungsten carbide from the chemical symbol, symbol for tungsten or from the Spanish, Swedish, German name for tungsten, Wolfram, ball indenter was used as opposed to HBS, which means a hardened steel ball. The 10 is the ball diameter in millimeters, and 3,000 is the force in kilograms of force. So after Brunel, then came the Rockwell method. The differential depth hardness measurement was conceived in 1908 by Vivian's professor Paul Ludwig in his book, Crudely the Cone Test. And differential death method subtracted out of the errors associated with the mechanical imperfections of the system, such as backlash and surface imperfections. The Brunel hardness test invented in Sweden was uh, developed earlier in 1900, but it was slow, not useful on fully hardened steel, and left too large an impression to be considered non-destructive. Hugh M. Rockwell and Stanley P. Rockwell from Connecticut in the United States co-invented the Rockwell hardness tester. A differential death machine they applied for a patent on July 15, 1914. The requirement for this tester was to quickly determine the effects of heat treatment on steel bearing races. The application was subsequ subsequently approved on February 11, 1919 and holds U.S. Patent 1294-171. At the time of invention, both Hugh and Stanley Rockwell worked for the new departure manufacturing company of Bristol, Connecticut. New Departure was a major ball bearing manufacturer, which in 1916 became part of United Motors and shortly thereafter General Motors Corporation. The scale which is set depending on material being tested, for example, HRA, HRB, HRC, etc. And when it comes to GD&T, you'll see the Rockwell hardness tester be set in HRA, B, or C, with a superficial rockness tester at 15N, 30, 45, or example, plastics can also be done with HRE, HRL, and HRM, and also with twin hardness testers, you can see that. So for example, very hard steel, like chisels and quality knife blades, will come out to HRC 55 to 66. Hardened high-speed carbon and tool steel, such as M2, W2, O1, CPM M4, and D2, as well as many of your powder stainless steels, such as CPM, S30V, 154, and ZDP-189 are alloys that hold an HRC upward of 68 to 70, such as the Hitachi-developed HAP-72. These are extremely hard, but also somewhat brittle. Axes, you'll see about 45 to 55 HRC, while brass in a low brass configuration will see an HR-55 to HR-93 in cartridge brass. after Rockwell became the Vickers method. The Vickers hardness test was developed in 1921 by Robert L. Smith and George E. Sandland at the Vickers LTD as an alternative to the Brinnell method to measure the hardness of materials. 
The Vickers test is often easier to use than other hardness tests since the required calculations are independent of the size of the indenter, and the indenter can be used for all materials irrespective of hardness. The basic principle, as with all common measurement measures of hardness, is to observe a material's ability to resist plastic deformation from a standard source. The Vickers test can be used for all metals and is once of the widest skills among hardness tests. The unit of hardness given by the test is known as the Vickers Pyramid Number, HV, or Diamond Pyramid Hardness. The hardness number can be converted into units of pascals, but should not be confused with pressure, which uses the same units. The hardness number is determined by the load over the surface area of the indentation and not the area normal to the force, and therefore is not pressure. Vickers hardness numbers are reported as the number HV and 30, or XXX, HV, YY, dash ZZ, if duration force differs from 10 seconds to 15 seconds. For example, 440 HV, 30-20, where 440 is the hardness number. HV gives the hardness scale Vickers, 30 indicates the load used in kilogram force, and 20 indicates the loading time if it differs from 10 to 15 seconds. And Vickers is going to be a very common, but the problem with Vickers is you do have to make sure that your workpiece is flat. If we look at the upper left picture, we can see that that is an example of a not flat workpiece, and the indenter came in at an angle compared to the workpiece. But if we look at the lower picture, we can see that that indenter is pretty much a perfect diamond, which is what we want to see in these testings. And next, though not really a surface hardness testing, it's one to be of note is the Mohs method. So the Mohs scale, though not commonly used in gd and the Mohs scale is a mineral hardness, is a qualitative or ordinal scale from 1 to 10, characterizing scratch resistance of various minerals through the ability of harder material to scratch softer material. The scale was introduced in 1822 by German geologist and mineral mineralogist Friedrich Mohs in his Treatise on Mineralogy. It is one of the several definitions of hardness in material science, some of which are more quantitative. The, the method is comprised of hardness by observing which minerals can scratch others is of great antiquity, having been mentioned by Theophrastus in his treatise on stones in 300 BC, followed by Pliny the Elder in his Natural Historia in AD 77. The most scale is useful for identification of material minerals in the field, but is not an accurate predictor of how well materials endure in an industrial setting for the toughness. So that is a basic history of hardness testing and some of the figures that allowed us to do this testing, which is an important tool in material analysis. So thank you for the video. Hey so guys. That was a history of hardness testing. I hope you enjoyed and remember, to hit the like and subscribe button down below. If you have any more interesting quality topics that you would like me to take a look at, don't hesitate to hit the comments button and, and I'll, I'll get, get to them when I can. can. So thank you and you have a great day. day.